And my scripture today is taken from the Lamza translation of the Bible from St. Matthew chapter 13, verses three through nine. And he spoke many things to them in parables and said, behold, a sower went out to sow. And when he had sown, some seed fell on the roadside and the fowls came and ate it. Other seed fell upon the rock where there was not sufficient soil and it sprang up early because the ground was not deep enough. But when the sun shone, it was scorched and because it had no root, it dried up. And other seed fell among thistles, and the thistles sprang up and choked it. And other seed fell in good soil and bore fruit, some one hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Thus ends the reading of our scripture, St. Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. We are the first week into the new year. Some of us may have made New Year's resolutions and were right on track. Others, well, let's say they tried. But instead of thinking of it as a resolution, I prefer to think of it as a reset, as a refocusing and fine-tuning our goals. New Year's Day and the dawn of each day are an opportunity for us to reset, refocus, and reevaluate whether we are fulfilling our soul's purpose. We don't have to wait. 365 days till January 1st to hit the reset button. Well, now it's less than 365 days. We can reset every day, every hour, every minute, or even every second. Each night when we lay our head on that nice, soft, comfortable pillow and drift off to sleep, our brain and our body are resetting themselves and they're being replenished every night. That's actually one of the reasons why it is so important that we get a sufficient amount of sleep so that the hard drive of our brain can be reset. Traditionally, traditionally, we place emphasis on refocusing our goals at the new year. What do we want to manifest in the new year? And what do we want to leave behind in the old? It is important for our well-being to sweep out our closets and to just let go of anything that no longer serves us, cleaning out the dead weight and clearing out the cobwebs of our past, letting go of what we just don't need to carry anymore or what's not ours to carry. And when we do this, we're making space to allow the new to come in, out with the old and in with the new. The scripture teaches us that if we want our seeds to grow, we need to be mindful of how and where we plant them. We need to be mindful to plant with intention. In this parable, the master teacher says, if we just toss the seeds out haphazardly, they will fall on the roadside and will be taken away by others or just simply dry up before they have a chance to take root. 
if we plant them and there's not enough soil, they will spring up prematurely and wither. Or if we plant them among thistles, the weeds will just choke the life out of them. And the thistles and the weeds represent our negative thinking or disbelief. If we really don't think we deserve to attain our goal or that we can't, then guess what? Yep, you got it. Self-fulfilled self -fulfilled prophecy. Chances are we probably won't. In order for them to grow and flourish, we need to intentionally plant them in rich, fertile soil, then feed them and take care of them. And the fertile soil that scripture is referring to here is our consciousness. Our consciousness and the way we think. When we sow new ideas, we want to plant them, not just believing, but knowing. Knowing and envisioning them growing. Watering them daily with positive intentions. I can, I will, I can do this. Now the first step is to determine what we want. Focusing on what we desire to manifest. So we plant with intention. We may have a multitude of ideas floating around in our mind, but we want to choose what is right for us so we can begin to focus our energy on it. If we try to accomplish too many things at once, our energies are just scattered and it is more difficult to nourish all the seeds with what they need to grow. We want to focus on a few goals and give them the care they need to grow. And we do this by going within, going within to the silence of our soul to seek what it is our soul wants. Sitting in meditation and asking our spiritual self to reveal to the physical what goals are for our highest and greatest good on this path of life for where we're at. In the silence of our meditation, we can hear. We can hear the still small voice of our intuition. Our intuition is that gut feeling. It's that internal compass that will never let us down. The only time that we may get lost is if we don't listen or trust it. We listen, then we begin to go with the flow to allow it to unfold. Once we have determined our goals, I suggest writing them down on a piece of paper and posting them in a place where we will see them every day. Narrow down your list to just a few ideas. We can always add more. Now we allow our goals to marinate in the fertile soil of our consciousness. As they begin to take root, we start to visualize how they will affect our life, what our life will look like when we attain these goals. We begin to see it in our mind. 
We begin to feel it all around us, taste it. And soon we begin to realize it. The more we think about it, the more energy we add to building it. And the more energy we put into it around this goal, the more likely it is to manifest. We put our heart and soul in it. It's like focusing our eye on the bullseye of that target. And when we are looking at that target, that's all that we can see. In this case, it is our laser intention. And we focus on that goal until we hit the mark and it manifests. The third step is to take action. We've done the mental work. Now we need to take the physical action. We can't just plant the seeds and expect them to grow on their own. Let's say our goal is to focus on our health and to exercise more. A lot of people begin the new year flooding into the gyms. Now, we could sit on the couch and we can visualize what we need to do to get ourselves to start doing this. Perhaps we can start walking every day and add more fruits and vegetables in our diet. But guess what? If we don't get off the couch and if we don't take action, if we don't go to the store to buy the fruits and vegetables, it's never going to happen. We need to do. We have to actively be engaged in doing and creating conditions and circumstances for these goals to manifest. And remember, remember, have patience. Be patient with yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day. So don't overwhelm yourself by expecting that you're going to accomplish everything in one day and then be frustrated because it hasn't happened overnight. We are a work in progress. Start out slowly. Be patient with yourself. Build a little bit more each day towards this goal. I share a story with you and one day I went to my doctors and I made up my mind. I was done. I was done. and I wanted to lose weight. I was done. So she started working with me. And on my first appointment, she asked me, she said, well, can you make this change or this change? They were small changes. And I thought, yeah, I can do it. I got this. She had me take baby steps. And what she asked me to do wasn't so radical that I felt deprived or that I couldn't do it. And each month I had a follow-up appointment and she'd review my progress and she'd say, moving that peg a little bit at a time. And she'd say, okay, now let's try to do this. Do you think you could do that? Yeah. I can do that until she got me to the point where I changed my eating habits sufficiently and increased the cardio in my workout to hit my target of losing the weight. I made the changes slowly. And if I maybe cheated a day, okay, so tomorrow I did better. And I believe. That's what helped me to stay the course. If she had told me the first day that I would be eating fewer than 1,200 calories a day and that I would give up carbs and sugar, I probably wouldn't have gone along for the ride and given up. Start out slow. Start out slow in increments 
that you're comfortable with. If your goal is to establish a regular meditation routine, perhaps start out each day meditating for five minutes. And then maybe next week, add five more minutes and continue to build until you're at the point that you want to be. Baby steps will lead us towards our goal. Inaction will take us nowhere. And other seed fell in good soil and bore fruit, some 100-fold, some 60, and some 30. The master teacher taught us the seed we plant in good soil will manifest in abundance. The good soil is our positive intention. And the knowing that we can and that we will attain whatever we set our mind to. And we determine the extent of our abundance. If we envision it as being 100-fold, that is what we will receive. And if we envision it as 30-fold, then that's what it will be. As we thinketh in our heart, so are we. The power is in our mind, and we want to have a prosperity consciousness and think of our abundance as being unlimited to whatever we have need of. Our abundance will flow as long as we know and continue to hold the intention of it flowing to us. It's similar to the scripture lesson of the widow and the oil. She was instructed to gather as many pots as she could. She and her sons gathered all of the pots. And the oil flowed and filled every pot, every last pot, until the last one was filled. And then the oil stopped. We decide how many pots we want to fill. And when we are full, the flow will stop. God is infinite, and infinite possibilities exist to create our own happiness and joy in our life. We are here to learn, and we are here to grow, to attain self and God realization and to enjoy our life, to enjoy our life on this earthly plane. The years go by in the blink of an eye, so don't wait till tomorrow. Do it today. There are so many opportunities just waiting for us to have the courage to try. Give yourself the freedom to try something new. Resolve that you will be the best that you can be today and every day. Focus on expanding your consciousness and floating in the infiniteness of all that can be. God is infinite and we too are a part of this infiniteness. It is the physical mind that limits us, not the spiritual. Plant the seeds of your dreams and have the courage to manifest them. You can and you will do it. Many blessings to you as you set your intentions and manifest your desires in this new year. Namaste.